If you aren't already familiar, Stack Overflow does a survey every year where they ask tens of thousands of developers what they think about current and emerging tools and technologies. It's a really good way to get an idea of where the market is for other developers like us and to generally see what technologies people are liking, hating, and how the industry is moving. It's not meant to represent all of software devs as the majority of devs don't take surveys, don't go online and do this for fun on the side. So it will be biased towards enthusiasts some amount. Regardless, it's one of the best resources we have as developers to see how the markets are going. I think you'll be surprised with some of what we see in here today. Without further ado, let's take a look. I didn't realize when the survey ended, so I got in a little late. We went deep into AI and ML to capture how developers are thinking. Oh boy. Most developers have a post-secondary education having some college or more. Interesting. And most developers have attained a bachelor's degree with a quarter attaining a master's. Also fascinating. Think the most visible developers didn't need education, which is why we have this assumption you don't need it. But the best money you can spend to make yourself a better programmer and easier to hire, if you haven't had a programming job before, the best money you could spend still is on college. It's like not a popular thing to say, but getting a degree is one of the best ways to increase your chances of getting a job if you have the four years and the money to spend. If you can get good at programming and prove that ahead of time without going to school, obviously do that. But if you're struggling to get that first job and you have the opportunity to go to college and you're young, like college is fine. And obviously if you can drop out and get a job, that's nothing to be ashamed of either. But yeah, having a degree is one of the best things you can do to help yourself get a job in the field. And for 41% of people to have a bachelor's and then like even more beyond that is nuts. Okay, learning to code. 80% are doing online resources. What a surprise. I, I want to understand the 20% that don't better, honestly. And 87,663 respondents on this question. Like, there's like over 15,000 people who didn't say that they learn online. And I want to understand them better. 60% watch videos on how to do things. That's crazy. I knew it was high, but that is nuts. Is there a way to break this down by age? Because I want to see if my, my assumption is that this is going to be younger, but I want to know that. That part's less interesting to me. Cool. In experience. Experience. Here's where things start getting real fun. Crazy to think that like 50% or so of the survey has 10 plus years of experience. That's pretty nuts. And the most experienced programmers are in Australia. That is fascinating. Years coding professionally is not that far off that first chart, which is also cool to see. Developer advocates are in the top five most dev experience. That's fascinating. It makes sense because like to communicate with developers, you need to understand them very well. But I'm guessing most people would not have expected that or like a dev advocacy role that isn't a, a programmer. Actually, I think that generally goes here. Only one of these five roles would be expected to code regularly. But an exec is not going to be coding much. An educator is not going to be coding much. And a database admin is not going to be coding much. And obviously DevRel isn't either. So it's fascinating that the, the roles with the most years of experience. Actually, that goes all the way down to here. All of these roles, other than the second one, are not expected to program a lot. One important bias to account for here before I boldly assume everything, the types of people who aren't developers day to day that still fill out this survey are going to be very nerdy about programming. So for a designer to fill out the Stack Overflow survey, they have to be nerdy enough to do that. And in order to be that nerdy, statistically speaking, it's more likely that you have like a lot of programming excitement and knowledge in history. So the average designer who fills out Stack Overflow is more likely to program a lot than the average coder who does just due to the likelihood they fill this out. Developer type. I'm losing my voice already and we're only an hour in. That's great. How long have I been saying this for y'all? Full stack is the future. The average person who doesn't code doesn't understand the difference between a backend and a frontend dev. They don't give a shit. And the more you're able to solve the problem that your users have, regardless of which system system it lives on, the more successful you'll be as a dev. And it seems like a lot of devs are noticing this because holy shit, 33%. That is more than front end and back end combined. That's more than front end, back end, desktop, enterprise, and mobile combined. This is the future. More eng managers than students are filling out Stack Overflow. Is this the tipping point? Is it over? Is Stack Overflow now for like millennial plus? Does Gen Z use Stack Overflow? That's the real question here. Key territories, Germany. I have noticed this. I have noticed a pretty big German like section of even my audience on YouTube and India as well. Let's compare this actually to my studio. So here is my YouTube audience for comparison's sake. Yeah, 20% US, 6.7 India, 5.3 UK, 
5.2 US or 5.2 Germany. Thank you, Aiden, for watching all of my videos multiple times to push that. 1.8% female is really good for tech YouTube. I know women tech YouTubers who are under 1%. I'm actually really proud of this number and how far we have pushed it. I am pushing to keep it going because women in engineering have a really fucking tough time and deserve better. But this number is very good for tech YouTube. It was at like 0.3% for my first couple months. I think they got rid of the gender demographics this year. I remember people saying that on Twitter. We reduced the number of demographic questions this year, only asking about age. Yeah, so we don't have the number here. Somebody asked, is my average age older than normal for tech YouTube? Yes, by a lot. I've compared to a lot of other tech YouTubers numbers and I shift like 10 base points up. Usually there is a much higher 18 to 24 split and it's closer to the 25 to 35 and then 35 plus gets a lot smaller. My ages for my channel are much older than most would expect. Most popular. What a surprise. JavaScript is one of the most popular technologies. This drop is crazy though. Like compared to the, what was the web survey we went over before? But yeah, compared to the other surveys I've looked at, this drop from JavaScript to TypeScript is very unusual. If we switch to professional, the gap gets a lot closer. And if we switch to learning to code, the gap gets a lot bigger. Interesting. What's nobody using professionally? What the fuck is Raku? Pretty sure this is like a TV thing, right? Like I can watch Netflix on it. If you need a programming language with Netflix built in, you're good. Databases. This one I was interested in because they also put like companies in here but they only put companies that are using like their own shit. Like is Vitesse in this? It is not. I will say I am shocked Postgres and MySQL are this close. I would not have expected that. Wow, the professional, the gap gets bigger. That I also did not expect. That's two surprises. I know Postgres is big, but I thought it would be a decent bit bigger than MySQL. Like I, I thought that it would be closer to 2X. MySQL is likely more popular in terms of like the amount of data in databases running one of these technologies overall, but more projects are spun up using Postgres every day by a lot. I can't imagine people who are doing a survey and clicking the button for the database they use. Like, like it is surprising to me so many of them use MySQL. I did not expect that. Elasticsearch being 14%, like how many people click that button? 10,000 people who did this survey said they use Elasticsearch. And 13,000 said MariaDB. This is interesting. I have a lot to think about here. Those learning are more likely to go with MySQL. What? Can someone explain this to me? Is this just the planet scale course? Why are people twice as likely to learn MySQL than Postgres? This is for people who are learning to code. This can't just be planet scale. I, I have no idea what, what's causing that. I need to do my own research in the future. That was confusing. I need to stop thinking that much about it. Cloud platforms. Vercel and Netlify are a lot closer there than I expected. Professionals, but the same. Learning. Vercel is losing to Netlify for learning to code. That is fascinating. As well as, oh wait, no, they're winning here. Yeah, almost 50% use AWS. Azure and Google Cloud are way closer than I expected. Firebase below Google Cloud is a little surprising to me. Cloudflare and Firebase being so close is also amusing. DigitalOcean is higher up than I expected. Vercel has more growth to do is what I'm seeing here, which is exciting. Fly is beating Render. That's another one I didn't expect. Fly is like pretty strongly beating Render here. If I switch to Enterprise or Professional Developers, will Render beat out Fly? Nope. Yeah, Render is losing hard to Fly. That is good to know. Cool. Web frameworks and technologies. Node beating out React very slightly. Next is about to beat Angular. God damn, that is impressive. Next is also about to beat out Vue for professional. It already beat out Vue overall, at least for a, a very Western heavy survey. Learning to code next is very high up. This is huge. Angular falling this far in the learning to code section is a big deal. That's like one of the biggest signs something's on the way out. There are more people learning Flask and ASP.NET than there are learning Angular. What? Game over. God damn. Rest in peace, Angular. Good luck with the recent changes. We'll see if y'all can increase adoption again. That hurts. Flutter being that much higher than React Native and Electron, that scares me because that's just like bad for the future. Yeah, this is what scares me the most, that, that Flutter is this highly overrepresented in people learning. That's insane. That is very bad for the future of the web and mobile. Like Flutter, God, no, I... Yeah, that scares me. I have to do way more React Native propaganda because this is not good. Flutter isn't native though. Guys, I have like four videos about why Flutter is terrible and I have another Flutter is terrible video coming out. I'll put it as simply as show me one good app that uses Flutter, just one. Other tools, obviously people are using Docker. It's pretty funny that Docker and NPM are so close and Homebrew because that means you are using a Mac. So for Homebrew to be in 22% of respondents is nuts. Integrated development environment via, whew, God. 
That is incredible. I don't think y'all understand just how massive this is. If you work with other developers, in particular in person, having most people by this much using the same editor is so nice. It means things like I can use my coworker's laptop quickly for pairing and I know how things work. It means things like we can commit the VS Code folder in our repo and it will install the right extensions for every developer on the team with the right settings all. It makes it so much easier for me and my teams to standardize and have the best experience consistently across the team. I saw someone ask about Adam. Adam's formally dead, so this is bad. Adam, like they have deprecated the editor. It no longer gets updates. It will soon be insecure if it isn't already. You should not be using Adam. It is dead. Yeah, Android Studio above Xcode is fascinating. Nano beating WebStorm is hilarious. Did that actually? Yeah, Nano beating WebStorm. Yeah, that is hilarious. Rip WebStorm. I won't miss you much. I don't get the IntelliJ people. I just, I can't do it. I want an editor that is as much just an editor as possible. Weird seeing Helix in here. Good for them. Synchronous tools. Jira has half market share. I hate that. But markdown files beat out almost everything else, which is hilarious too. Everyone thinks Linear is this massive company. And here they are sitting comfortably at 2%, losing out to Microsoft Planner and Airtable. Hey, at least Basecamp is dead. Yeah, markdown for life. This hurts me every time I see it. Brief story time. I've only ever had to use Teams once. It was very early in Teams life. And I used it when I was working at Twitch to call the Microsoft TypeScript team. They booked the meeting so they sent us a link and I had to sign into the team's browser experience and in that moment swore I would never use it again for any reason. It has now been four years and I have still not used it again for any reason and I'm very proud to be teams clean. Also discord being so close to zoom is huge. I think people have been underestimating discord as a work tool for a while especially beating out google meet. If I go to professional google meet just barely beats discord for professional use. Discord is climbing fast. I think they're in a good place to take enterprise more seriously. We'll see how it goes but i i could see discord pivoting more more heavily into like enterprise if they add like three features low cisco webex i do miss irc being common at companies the good old days this is fascinating this high for mac os i did not expect god wsl is still so painful to use i'm surprised it's that high ubuntu beating out android and ios is funny God damn it, Arch. Arch beating out iPad. I guess it's the year of the Linux iPad. The year of the Linux tablet. Are we here? The first thing to win professional versus personal is Red Hat. AI search tools. ChatGPT is the winner by a lot. Bing AI is doing pretty well. Then Wolfram Alpha. Then everything else. I don't care too much about all of this stuff, but I am curious. Tab9 is doing much better than I expected. Code Whisper is doing slightly better than I expected. Everything else is doing much worse than I expected. Copilot having, I mean, it was only 40K respondents for this, but 50% response out of the 40K. Pretty big. Admired and desired. So what's the difference? Blue is desired and red is admired. This is very interesting where the, des the desire for TypeScript is a bit lower, but the admiration is significantly higher. Same with Rust where the desire is a good bit lower, but the admiration is significantly higher. It really seems like Rust has a strong like cabin fever effect to it. <laughs> Elixir has, does Elixir have the widest range? I think Elixir has the widest range here. That is hilarious. <laughs> Yeah, 4% desired, 73% admired. That sounds about right. Not many things need Elixir, and even fewer end up using it. But the few that do, it's such a good language. Rocco has the highest range, 65 to 0.3 versus 73 to 4. Yeah, you're right. It's slightly higher range for Raku. God damn it. I knew those guys would come back and haunt me with their damn TVs. Postgres is like a standard deviation ahead of everything else here. That's fascinating. Surprised that Vitesse didn't make it into any of the database stuff. Cloud platforms. Hester and Vercel have a large proportion that use and want to continue using. Yeah, Vercel is killing it here. I don't know anything about Hetzner, but I've been hearing more about it. Yeah, this is a good chart for knowing like where adoption is for something. If your blue is far to the right, your interest is growing. If your red is far to the right, you're converting well. Web frameworks and technologies. Strange that Next is again, less desired and more admired than React, but it checks out. Also sad to see Vue shift so far in admiration where people are considering leaving. Angular's about where I'd expect it. Svelte admiration is really high. Phoenix, which for those who don't know, is the equivalent of like, kind of like Rails, kind of like Next for your Elixir apps. So it's interesting to see how admired it is, but again, Elixir, that lines up. Interest in Remix has plummeted and the admiration has gone down a decent bit two. Drupal's dead. It's weird to see. WordPress is doing okay. Other frameworks and libraries. This is a section I didn't care as much about. God, the Flutter people. Other tools. People are more and more burnt out on NPM. People are more and more fine with 
you're excited about V more fine with homebrew. You'll like cargo a lot. That's like outstanding compared to the other stuff in here. Good to know. The package management in the or in the Rust world seems to have people very happy. VS Code killing it with that high range here and everything else not as much. NeoVim has slightly higher admiration, but a lot less interest. Checks out. Asynchronous tools. People really like linear even though not many are desiring it. I dislike that Jira is that high for admired. I love that Markdown is that high because Markdown is great. Yeah, Discord's insanely admired. Is it the highest admiration here? 72.73. Nope, it's slightly losing to Matrix, but it's still very up there, especially when you consider how high the interest is. This shows me Discord has a real chance at killing Slack. Like this is, this is a real opportunity right now. AI search tools. <laughs> Jesus fuck. That's the furthest along anything's been in here by quite a bit. Copilot, same deal. Wow. Desired is higher than admired. Is that the case on any other thing in this chart where there's more desire than admire? That's insane. I just want to see the numbers to and from Rust. 12,000 who work with TypeScript want to work with Rust. 17,000 work with JavaScript want to work with Rust. I hate this chart so much. It's like the worst chart I've ever used in my life. The Mongo Postgres binding is real, as is the Redis one. MySQL Postgres is pretty strong. MySQL, my, I, I hate this chart. AWS is almost entirely like self-eating. Yeah, no, this chart's fucking useless. I Everything goes to VS Code in the end. Top paying technologies. Interesting. So the thing that we don't see here, we change this to number of responses. 273 people have Zig jobs. There aren't cheap Zig jobs yet. There are only new Zig jobs. And those jobs are going to be in markets that pay higher. There just isn't much Zig, which is why you're going to see a bigger number there. Honestly, the only way you can use Zig at the job is if you have been there long enough to convince the company to use Zig. So all those people are going to be the highest paid at their companies. So we say darts at the bottom. That is hilarious. That's a thing. So what I'm getting from this is Zig and Dart are exact opposites. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with a spectrum where Zig is on one side and Dart's on the other. TypeScript's decently high. How much higher is it than JavaScript? Want to get a raise for three grand? Just learn TypeScript. To be clear, I think this is one of the, like, the least useful charts because all of this is based on region and like the state of the market for different technologies, not on how much each of these things pays. If you broke this down by region, it'd be a much more interesting chart, but they didn't do that here. So it well, looks like Dart people are getting paid more. JavaScript people are getting paid significantly more. This also kind of confirms my Gen Z theory that Gen Z uses Stack Overflow a lot less because they would be the ones getting the lower pay jobs. Interesting. About 30% don't plan to use AI for anything and the rest do. I'm team AI augmentation for things. Like I don't want AI to write my code for me, but I want it to help me write code. And somebody just said in the chat, ChatGPT has replaced a lot of my Stack Overflowing where I can write a comment and it will generate code that's usually close enough to what I'm looking for. And it's nice. Hard to imagine coding a lot without something like like ChatGPT at this point because it is such a nice change. It's not like essential. It lets me save my brain for other things. AI tool sentiment. Very favorable, favorable, indifferent, unsure. And this is good to see. Only like 4% of people are leaning unfavorable. Not even like a bit over 3% are leaning unfavorable in dev. I don't see it doing these things for me, but I do see it doing these things. So I'm aligned with the majority of devs. I would say I'm neither trust nor distrust, leaning somewhat distrust. Interesting that only 3% don't like it. So 3%-ish unfavorable, 15%-ish, wait, no, here, 25%-ish uh, distrust. So only 3% are unfavorable when 25% distrust. That says a lot about how we're feeling about AI right now, where we don't have to trust it to benefit from it. AI for writing code is the popular thing. Debugging, decently popular. Documenting, getting more popular. Rest, a lot less so. This all checks out. AI tools next year, not very different. Work time, employment, 70% are employed, 15% are independent, 13% are in school. Do they have year over year for this? Because I would love to see how this compares to last year in terms of the independent section in particular. Employment by geography. US is 68%, Germany is 56%, a lot higher student rate in Germany, even higher student rate in India. Interesting. Most everybody's doing hybrid work now too. Only 16% are fully in person. 40% have less than 100 employees in their organization. That is something I also remember seeing a few times. Salary by developer type. I like that this one is regional. Cool. So I can do this one to better understand things compared to myself. What's interesting with senior execs is that your comp, especially for early stage stuff, is going to be weird. And you're going to, statistically speaking, there are more early stage execs than late stage because there's a lot of companies. Obviously, big companies will have maybe five to 10 execs, but small companies have two to four and there's a lot more of them. So the average executive, the average CEO is CEO of a smaller company rather than a bigger one. And I'll tell you right now, as the CEO of a company, I don't pay myself anywhere near this much money. My salary on the books is a lot lower than this. And as a result, if I took this survey, 
I'd be driving this number down. However, the other side of that is the number can be really high if you're one of those big companies and you're executive there. Like I'd imagine the executive for a company like Amazon is gonna have a seven digit number for their salary. It's not just cash, that'll be a lot of stock and incentives and things. But if you take four salaries under 100K and average that against one salary in the millions, it makes sense how this number happens and also why it's not that far off from other things. But what would be interesting is if we could see the range here of like respondents, I'd imagine that the lower end here is one of the lowest ends and the higher end is obviously the highest end. But this number is from an, a chaotic process of averaging, not from an actual representation of how much money they make. Is it median? Oh, median salary. That's even more interesting, actually. I would kill for the data for this one. Interesting that DX makes so much more than all these other roles. Is that the case in other? You know, DX falls a bunch globally. Not a bunch, but yeah, falls a couple places. Yeah, not understanding your response overall. Yeah, only 48K or 46 and a half K. But yeah, you're saying front end is lower. Yeah, same price as full stack and hardware though. This is interesting. Yeah, this is another one of those where like it's the title people have on paper and the role that they do at their company can vary a lot. I can't imagine this being super accurate. People are also commenting on designer being higher than front end. Again, the reason for this is if you're a designer filling out the stack overflow survey, you're not a normal designer. You're a designer that cares a lot about code and designers who care a lot about code are a different group from the average designer. They are more tuned in with their job. They're more involved with their team. They're more essential in a lot of ways, probably because they know how to code. That's why they're on Stack Overflow. And yes, a designer who is familiar enough with code to do the Stack Overflow survey is probably higher paid than your average designer. They might even be higher paid than your average developer because getting a good designer that's tuned in that way, really hard to find. Anyways, if I spend too much time in that chart, it's going to drive me crazy. So we're going to go to salary and experience by developer type. Interesting that this cuts off at seven years for the starting point. Data science, hmm. It's an interesting chart. And you can see here, like, yeah, a designer with 13 years of experience on average is very underpaid compared to other roles. Like a manager with the same amount of experience is paid almost or more than double the average designer. Salary and experience by language. Again, if you're using Zig at the workplace, it's because you get to choose which language you're using at your company, which means you're more senior than average. Honestly, kind of same with Erlang, but it has a lot of stranger biases within it. I don't think like the salary to code language is going to bring much value. Like that's just not not a chart that we can learn too much from. Maybe trends year over year, but the actual like comparing two languages via their salaries is, is nonsense. Purchasing technology. This is something I think a lot about. I, you know what? I want to pull my audience, actually. Let's do a poll. Let's ask the exact same question. Do you have influence in tech buying decisions at work? Motherfucker, you just rewrote your mono repo in turbo and had an insane PR. You have at the very least some. They don't even let you use that over yep. Yeah, that would be little to no, I would argue. Yeah, this is dependent on company and team size, but it's also dependent on how senior you are. We have a good bit more influence than average. So if we compare these numbers here, also they didn't have a question that's like unemployed. Our sum to great influence are like the same and little or no is a good bit smaller. Yeah, we have good numbers here. This is a big part of why this channel is so valuable and why this community is so different because the average person here has been coding for a bit and has a lot of buy-in at their jobs. And to the 50 unemployed here, if y'all are in this community, you're gonna get there really fast. Yes, bigger companies will obviously have more red tape, but at the same time, bigger companies often have small teams that are their own isolated boxes that can, for better or worse, do their own stuff. Look at that. Some influence won, but lots of influence is higher than little to no influence for us. That is a very different chart than here. And again, like this is what makes our community different. We're not as fun for newer developers. And that's, I think that's a good thing as much as it's a bad thing. Short list or investigate new tech purchases. Yep, that makes sense. Whereas go to Theo's stream and spam his chat until somebody replies. So it feels like there's thousands of people doing that one. Coding outside of work. So tangent, because I saw this come up. Unironically, yes, it might sound silly, but if you're involved in the community, you're involved in the Discord, saying that you're part of developer communities in your resume is actually a good thing. Imagine that the person reading that resume also is a Theo viewer, and you can talk about a random video of mine that you've both seen. That is a great way to know if somebody can hold a conversation about software technology and the stuff that we do every day. It, it might seem silly. Mir, if you don't have I edit Theo videos in your resume, you're being stupid. Like seriously, that should be in your resume. The fact that I trust you enough 
both as an editor and a technical person. Absolutely. Include the fact that you're part of this community and that you spend a lot of your time hanging out, learning about software dev stuff. I 100% believe this should be on your resume if you're still hunting for your first gig. Maybe by your second or third gig, if you're not having issues getting your resume noticed. Absolutely. But like, if you're struggling to fill your resume, I've been in Theo's server for a year and I was one of the earliest adopters of Create T3 app, especially if you can also say I contributed to Create T3 app. That's huge. That's absolutely huge. So yeah, like as silly as it might sound, including this community in your resume is absolutely worthwhile. Yeah, you could say T3.gg community member or something. We'll come up with a, a better term for it that has SEO, but like just the... <laughs> Exactly. Y'all get it. If you're the type of people that hang out in a community like this for fun, like you're, you're chilling here on a Wednesday afternoon chatting about this stuff with me, put that on your resume because one of two things happens. Either the company you're talking to gets it and you're now taken more seriously in the interview process or the company that you're talking to doesn't get it and that job's a worse fit for you. Like if you apply to a company that judges you for putting this community on your resume, that's not a place you want to work. You can do much better. That's my thought on that topic. Sorry for the tangent. Coding outside of work. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I want to test this. I actually don't like this question as much. I was talking this like a general, do you code outside of work? I guess I'll do that. Do you code outside of work? Yeah, 91% of people coding outside of work. Yeah, a little bit higher than here. Checks out. Now we're back to community. Cool. This is a thing that we're all very experienced in. Visiting sites across Stack Overflow. Overflow versus Exchange. I forget about Stack Exchange. I forget they're like also kind of a thing. Crazy how in the Stack Overflow survey, 98% of people use Stack Overflow. Who would have guessed? I don't have a Stack. I might actually have a Stack Overflow account. I don't use it though. Frequency of participation on Stack Overflow. This actually is a huge signal for how biased the survey is. Let's ask here. And by participate, I mean you ask a question or you give an answer. This is what I expected. I'm also literally never here. Here. I, I wanted to do this because I want to highlight how bias the survey is in the sense that it's it's a unique demographic of people. Even within Stack Overflow users, it is a small subset who answer questions regularly. For, for reference, I wanted to do the survey. I only knew the survey was live because Prime did a video about it. And when I went to do it, it was already closed because I don't use Stack Overflow enough to notice the survey is live. So the people who use it enough to notice the survey are a biased subset of users. And I just wanted to numerically prove that by pointing out, again, from, from my bias, audience of the 600 or so people here right now, 80% don't answer questions versus 20% here. This is biased towards people who answer questions on Stack Overflow, which is a very weird set of people. And obviously they're going to feel like they're part of the community. Professional developers, productivity impacts. This is a professional development survey. 86 are ICs, not managers. Very interesting that only like 25% are under five years and most have way more professional work experience. I'd imagine ICs are slightly higher and then managers are slightly longer. Yeah, that makes sense. Ooh, this is interesting. I have interactions with people outside of my immediate team. So an IC goes down, but not a lot. I know which system or resource knowledge silos prevent me from getting information across the organization. Surprised so many disagree. So this is a good set of questions around how resource people feel with information at their job. Yeah, ability to find knowledge information is the name of the chart. That makes sense. Waiting for answers to questions often interrupts my workflow. Yep, strongly agree here. Interesting. I, I don't like how this one's laid out because some of the questions are positive, some of them are negative, and it's, it's hard to parse quickly. Frequency of productivity frictions. Countering knowledge silos at work big and painful one to two times a week versus never interesting need help from people outside of the team one to two times a week or you're talking to people outside of your immediate team much more common overall people who are doing that never that's crazy 10 percent of people never interact with people outside of the team daily time spent searching for answers what do we mean by searching for answers because i my whole job is searching for answers like what is life and how much will people pay for it but yeah this is per day imagine ic is going to be huh i did not expect that shift it's a weird question to answer. Daily time spent answering questions. I'd imagine field managers much higher. Yep, very interesting. Developer experience. Obviously CI being high is expected, but only 71%. I am amazed that CI is not 90% plus. That scares me, honestly. That's the end. That was a fascinating survey. The desired versus admired section was really, really interesting. And I learned a lot about how people are viewing different languages and technologies overall. This was definitely a biased survey through the, the weird nature of your average stack overflow reply guy. But overall, I feel like this is, but overall, I feel like there's a lot of good info in here and I might not have learned too much, but I've confirmed a few things I was believing before and am really excited about the future of all these technologies. Next year, let's make sure TypeScript destroys the JavaScript numbers. But for now, 
now. Let's be happy with the survey and everything we learned with it. Thank you guys as always. I'll pin a video here uh, that's a much longer one with a, what I would consider a more interesting survey that I went over actually with Ryan Carniato, the creator of Solid, and Fred K. Schott, the creator of Astro. So check that out if you haven't already. It's a great video. Thank you guys as always. Peace, nerds.